Hi, I'm Rick Schultz and welcome to The Audiophile. A lot of you have been asking when I'm going to get a haircut. Well, <laughs> I don't know why you're asking, apparently I'm a little fluffy. But what we're here to talk about today is not haircuts, but loudspeakers. One of the common questions that I have besides when I'm going to get a haircut is how do I know how to pick the right speaker cable for the right speaker? Now, in order to be able to understand how speaker cables affect a speaker, I think the first thing we want to do is really talk about the loudspeaker itself. How does this thing operate? And um, when we understand how it operates, we'll understand a lot more about speaker cables and the choices that you might want to make when it comes to actually picking the right kind of cable for your loudspeaker. So what we're looking at here, this is a Green Mountain Audio uh, Calypso. And the Green Mountain Audio Calypso is both time and phase coherent. What you can see is that there's three separate drivers, the, the bass driver, the mid-range driver, and the tweeter. Each one of them is in a separate cabinet, and you can actually see the difference for where these drivers are located on the loudspeaker. So the bass driver doesn't have the ability to be able to be nearly as far back at any point in time as the mid-range driver. Now the reason why that is, is because the goal behind making a phase coherent loudspeaker or time and phase coherent loudspeaker is based on matching the voice coils, the end of the voice coil with each other. So each one of these at the, at the voice coil, which is the, the, the copper coil that you see inside the loudspeaker, when you look at those coils on the inside, they'll actually be matched um, with where they sit on these three drivers. So that begins what we call time and phase coherent. Now, there's going to be mechanical and electrical time and phase coherence. So in this particular loudspeaker, which uh, I have to tell you is really quite a marvelous design, Roy Johnson, who's the designer over there at Green Mountain Audio, is a physicist, and he really understands what he's doing when he puts together a loudspeaker. And uh, this particular loudspeaker is, is one of my favorites. Now, what they've done over at Green Mountain Audio is they've developed a loudspeaker that can change based on the seating position of the actual end user. Now, there's only a certain point that you can change this up into because they also realize that one of the things that's really important is how this responds to the room. Because the room is part of your acoustic environment and it's the other loudspeaker that basically comes into play. So as these drivers start to move back and forth, what they want is to have the energy hit the back wall, hit the side walls, and even the front wall as evenly as possible. So meaning that the energies actually arrive there at the same time. So that's really important. The other part that they've taken into consideration on this loudspeaker is where you might actually be sitting. Because the taller you are, the closer distance it is to either the tweeter or the mid-range or the bass driver. So if you're sitting down in a really low sitting position, you'd have to pull the mid-range driver closer towards you in order to be able to make the time that this energy arrives to your ear closer to the time that the bass driver is actually going to get to you. And the same thing with the tweeter. The reason that it's such a great loudspeaker is because of this ability to be able to be phase coherent and electrically time coherent. What Roy does when he builds this loudspeaker is he actually calculates the total amount of resistance. Now when you go and put your energy into a crossover, Whenever you add resistance, like a resistor for example, you can actually determine the total amount of time it will take from energy, energy to move from point A to point B based on the amount of resistance that's there. So when he builds his loudspeakers, he considers that time that it takes so that the electricity as it's moving to each one of these drivers from the actual uh, amplifier itself is going to electrically hit one of the, each one of these drivers at the exact same time. That's called time and phase coherent. So we have both time and phase coherent design in this particular loudspeaker. Now, as loudspeaker designs are starting to develop in these last few years, we're seeing much more in the, in the idea of time and phase coherent. The reason being is because it's actually quite necessary in order to have a really good high-end audio reproduction, it has to be time and phase coherent. So you're seeing less and less products that are not time and phase coherent and more and more that are advertising to be time and phase coherent. 
when it comes to understanding time and phase coherence, though, it, it takes, it, there's a lot more than what I've explained behind this. This is basically just a very simple overview, but it shows you, um, you know, the beginning of what it is that we're starting to try to do and move all these drivers at the same time and have them be in line with each other, not from the front of the driver, but from the voice coil itself. So another way you might do this is just to slant the front of the speaker, and you see that in a lot of other designs. The other thing that you can uh, do is, is, as you go over to electrostats, you, you see a single panel that's coming down. And those are often incredibly time and phase coherent. And the reason being is because the panel actually moves in one fluid motion. It's usually a very large panel. So there might be two or three panels on a loudspeaker, but they all start from approximately the same place. There is no voice coil, so they're all starting from the same point source. And that's why there can be such an amazing amount of resolution in those panels. So why did, how does any of that got to do with the choice of loudspeaker cable? Well, time and phase coherence is important throughout the entire audio system. The more we understand it, the more we can actually create an audio system that will have a greater amount of resolution, be actually more energy efficient, and, and play music more like live music. Now, when it comes to cable choices, one of the things that we've been talking about for years, and of course this is where my own personal area of expertise is, is in the actual conductors themselves. Now if we look closely at these conductors, I'm showing you a stranded conductor and a solid core conductor. Now some people are calling solid core conductors, they use this style, which I still call stranded, but there's no hole in the center, and uh, so they, they still call it a solid core conductor. That's not what a solid core conductor is by definition. Solid core is simply one conductor, okay? Um, the fact that it's solid on the inside uh, is, is pretty standard. There are hollow core conductors on the market now too that have their own uh, concept and design behind them. But the idea behind these two conductors is that as electricity moves through them, if you have your signal moving through this particular conductor, all of the signal moves through one conductor, and the conductor has a set resistance. Now, if you were to chop this into little sections and you were to you know, uh, actually just dissect this little guy and actually take a real good close-up look at him, you can see that no two sections of any conductor are exactly the same. So the resistance is going to vary as you go down this conductor. However, it's going to vary the same for every frequency. The problem that happens, and the reason why audio cables can make such a profound difference from one design to uh, the other, is based partly on this, and it, it's called uh, time and phase distortion as well. It happens actually in the cable itself, where the signal comes into each one of these strands. What happens is, when the signal comes into each one of these strands, you could take on the other end, and if we were divided out two, you could take one of these strands and hook it to a whole other loudspeaker. And you know what? That loudspeaker would work. It would actually have all of the frequencies in it, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And you could, or you could take another one, and you could put two of them to a different loudspeaker. What I'm saying is that each one of these does the job of this particular unit, the solid core conductor. But it separates the signal. And it, in this particular case, it separates it into about 20 or 25 times. As it does that, each one of these conductors is going to have a slightly different resistance. So what happens is the signal becomes divided and is separated into a lot of different resistances as it goes through the wire. And as it gets to the loudspeaker itself and it starts to drive, modulate the, the, the loudspeaker, it's going to be coming through one, the first one of these conductors that's most conductive first, and then the, the one that maybe is uh, broken off in the inside and that's most resistive, it's going to be coming through that last. Because we know that resistance directly relates with time, it will drive one of these drivers forward first, and then by the time that first one, the most conductive one, starts to make the driver come back, that last one might be asked, and, and it's starting to go on the bottom half of the waveform, pushing the driver back if, if it was going forward, then the, the last one is coming in, is still pushing forward. And what that does is it creates a resistor. And that's basically the way that uh, a treble control and a bass control in the past used to work. It's very similar, uh, almost exactly the same sort of concept. And that's why we turn to audio cables to start to tune our audio system. If you're using a stranded cable right now, even if it's from a high-end audio company, but you just want to get into a little bit of simple science, one of the things that you can do is you can go down to a hardware store, find yourself some solid core conductor, and change it. Now, if you want to do a neat experience, try to find something that's in a similar gauge size. But you'll find that as you increase the total gauge size, you lower resistance, which allows more energy to be able to come through to your loudspeaker, giving you better control.
Now what this does is it actually tightens up your base, makes it a little less boomy, and lowers the amount of fatigue in the top end of the, of the treble, because you actually have more energy to start to move these drivers with. The more energy you have, the more efficiently that works, and the more things become accurate. So when it comes to picking a speaker cable, if you're using anything like an electrostat or a time coherent speaker like the Green Mountain Audio, um, there's just tons of them out there nowadays, you're gonna definitely want to stay with a solid core conductor. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this little segment. If you have more questions for us, we'll have more answers. Thanks for, for joining us and watching the audio file.